I have a love-hate relationship with studying. Actually, mostly hate. It sucks. It's no fun. But the one thing that gets me through those 12-hour study days is music. I find myself gravitating towards the same genres every time. Among those are lo-fi hip-hop and binaural beats. I always knew that there was something about these genres that made it easy for me to obliterate hundreds of Remnote flashcards in a single session. But then the debate becomes, which one is better for productivity? Are you team lo-fi or are you team binaural? Since I can't make up my mind on gut feeling alone, like I usually do when I'm in a pickle, we turned to science. We did some digging, and turns out there's quite a bit of research on why this music works so well. Of course, no matter how sound the science is, see what I did there? When it comes to music, we all have our personal preferences. I'm gonna come out and say it, I'm team lo-fi all the way. But I have this brother who's like, so we'll present the science, make our cases, and then we'll let you decide. But choose wisely, or you're dead to me. All right, team, let's lo-fi. Lo-fi definitely hasn't been studied as closely, but we can't argue it doesn't work. So here are the two big selling points that I've dissected. First is the simplicity. At its core, if I break down a generic lo-fi track, it's not that complicated at all. Throw down a laid back 70 to 90 BPM-ish groovy drum loop. Slap on a few jazzy inspired chords on piano or Rhodes. Add a sparse bass line. Top it off with that vinyl crackle or white noise for the old school feel. Maybe a Yoshi. Or a Mario. Just for good measure. That's pretty much it. You can get creative with sound design, sampling, and adding more texture, but it's all icing on the cake at that point. Although music is playing, the goal is actually to forget that it's there. Kevin Woods, one of Brain.fm's neuroscientists, described the ideal focus music as having no salient events. What that means is we don't want too much variation or abrupt changes in a track that might pull us out of the zone. It's like a mid-roll ad in a YouTube video. We're immersed in the story, feeling the heartbreak of the hero's journey, cheering him on as he leans in for that kiss until- Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. So simplicity is key to maintaining this steady trance-like state of focus. In lo-fi, this means avoiding any new obvious or piercing sounds. No lyrics, because that's an immediate attention grab. No dance-worthy catchy melodies. And a chill BPM drum groove that's not too stimulating to where we want to get up and fist bump, but also not too slow to where we'd fall asleep. We're not going for top 40s here, all right? <laughs> Actually, the exact opposite. Simplicity makes all the tracks blend together, and that way they're predictable to our ears, and thus easier to forget about. And second, lo-fi is all about creating a vibe. We have this anime vintage aesthetic and hip hop feel. It's hard not to feel like a complete baddie when listening to lo-fi. I'm Bully McGuire up in here. I think this is in part due to the production style. Muted sounds and vinyl crackle give it that nostalgic feel, like ah, remembering the good old days or Christmas morning as a child. It's actually one of the reasons why people prefer listening to vinyl. They say it sounds better, but they can't pinpoint why. Naturally, lo-fi has a positive effect on our mood, which correlates to a positive effect on our cognition. When we feel better, when we're relaxed, productivity follows. So good. And ladies and gentlemen, a quick PSA when it comes to listening to music while you study. Remember to keep the volume down. Oh, I know how tempting it can be to crank that dial and relive your Coachella fantasy. But for the sake of your ear health and your productivity, please keep it down. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. We thank you for your cooperation. So the science behind binaural beats is a bit more refined, but before we talk about that, we've got to make sure that we understand brain waves. Our brain activity can be measured in brain waves, and we measure this by using electrodes that we stick to our heads. There are five different types of brain waves that your brain can emit depending on your current state of mind and your current activities. For example, delta waves while we're sleeping, 
theta waves while we're in a meditative or drowsy state, alpha waves while awake and relaxed, beta waves are when our alertness is increased, and gamma waves for focused concentration. So that's just a little background on brain waves. Now the way that binaural beats relates to this is that we're using sounds to influence our brains to change from one state to another. For example, if I'm feeling drowsy right now, my brain is emitting theta waves, but I want to be more focused, I want to reach beta waves. I can use binaural beats to influence my brain activity and increase my focus. The way binaural beats works is that we play two different notes, one in each ear, and when the brain perceives these two different notes, it takes the average of the two. And that average, it synchronizes our brain to a similar wavelength. If none of that made sense to you, then let's try a little demonstration. If you're not already, go ahead and put on some headphones for this next part. So here's a note, it's a D, and you should hear it in your right ear. Here's the same note played in the left ear. Obviously when I play them together, you just hear one note. But now watch as I slowly detune the left ear just by two hertz. Immediately we get this wobbling effect, which is the binaural beat. Binaural meaning both ears and beat referring to the beating effect of the detuned notes. Okay, so let's take a step back because you don't really need to bother with all that technical science unless you're trying to make your own binaural beats. but it's really as easy as just going on Google or YouTube and searching binaural beats for whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Binaural beats for focus, binaural beats for sleep, binaural beats for meditation. The best research on binaural beats has found that it helps with anxiety and pain control. But for our case, there's also good research on the use of binaural beats to enhance your learning. And by learning, I mean increasing your cognition, focus, and creativity. So, lo-fi beats versus binaural beats. Now that we've analyzed the science, we can see that each type of music affects our brain in a slightly different way. Lo-fi plays more on mood and motivation. It triggers emotions, nostalgia, but also has a steady rhythm that helps keep you motivated and moving forward. Binaural beats deal with brain waves and aims to influence our level of alertness and concentration. Basically, binaural beats has a bit more hard science to it. It's more clinical, it's measurable, whereas lo-fi is a little bit more moody, it's touchy-feely, it's kind of like Maddie. But I can't deny that it works. I personally love lo-fi music too. I would recommend that you experiment with both types of music because they can both potentially serve you in different situations. And also what works for me might not work for you. I find that lo-fi is great for longer study sessions or repetitive work, while binaural beats can be great for shorter bursts of high intensity focus and problem solving. And that might not be true for you. Just keep in mind that you can use both for different purposes. And it's easy to interchange. It's not like you're trying to change your diet or change your exercise routine. It's as simple as just choosing a different playlist. And to make it even simpler for you, we've already produced our own lo-fi and binaural beats, and you can find it right here. 